Sokora ila nemi Rakava mulu Akadara nesu Iro soko Rakava chieta Malika izere Nerima Pakutaga Sokora ila nemi Rakava mulu Akadara nesu
hopped to the water. The clouds are the dust to your feet Even if the world wins, you have your way. What the Father may have to worship. In your presence, we rejoice. There's no other rock like you, Jesus Christ.
Deuteronomy 12 from verse 33. No one can ever condemn another person. No one can condemn you other than yourself. By your very words, you are justified or condemned. Your very words, you, not your neighbor, not your brother, not your sister. Some have even gone on to name their children after their calamities. A child who has yet to see life, yet to hear him being called Namo Poverty. A child who is hardly a week old. being settled with an entire generation's poverty. <laughs> Many, even here, they name their children. They want to get to their brother or sister who has done wrong to them. Then they find their child to be one who can be used as a tool for fighting back. And how they do it is to name that child after that problem or challenge. Many, because they have no boldness to confront that neighbor. So what they do is other children have actually been called trouble. And indeed, those children become trouble in their lives. By the words, words, words. Yet it is only the word of God that saves. It is only the word of God that sanctifies. It is only the word of God that builds. It is only the word of God that delivers. It is only the word. Not the word of this world. For many have believed the message of their friends. Message of this world. Which is after the experiences of man. Yet those who believe the message of the cross, they are saved. Amen. Yet the message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. It is foolishness. They see it as foolish, foolishness. For in their own mind, they say, how can one be saved by mere words? By one just speaking words, how can one be saved? Yet salvation is not of the body, but of the spirit, the heart. It is of the heart, not of the body. Yet many are conscious of their own bodies, not of their spirits. They would rather take care of the body and neglect the spirit. That's why if you look to many, how many times they feed the body, they even have lost count. But how many times they feed their spirit, they can count. How many times they fast? Many, they know how many times they fasted throughout their lives. They know. Yet if you ask 
asked them, how many times they've eaten food that profits the flesh countless times? How many times they read the word? Uh, maybe once a week? Or if I don't forget. <coughs> Such are those who are swayed by every wind of doctrine. When they hear men saying this, that's what they follow. They follow the experiences of fellow men. Yet the Lord says, who has believed our reports? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? It is to those in whose heart the word of God has been planted. Unless the word of God is planted in your heart, it cannot save you. The word is not just for the mind. Unless the word is planted in your heart, it can never bear fruit. For it is only by his words that we are cleansed and made pure. It is only by his words that we are made holy. By his words. Not by signs and wonders that many run after. When they see signs and wonders, they will never even wait to check whether truly those signs and wonders are from God. For signs and wonders are not for believers, but for unbelievers. That's what Paul says. When I came to you, I did not come to you with eloquent, eloquence of speech, but with fear and trembling, as one who was weak. He says, I did not come to you speaking the wisdom of this world. Lest your faith rest on the wisdom of man. Says I came to you with the demonstration of power so that your faith may rest upon the spirit and the power of God. But unto those who are mature, we speak the deep mysteries of God. The wisdom of God. The word of God is food to the Spirit. It is food to the Spirit. Now read 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 1. It is food, the word. That's why as newly born babies we must desire the sincere meal which is the word of God, so that you may grow thereby. Amen. That you may grow to know who he is, to know who God is. Read 1 Peter 2 from verse 1. The word is nourishment to those who delight themselves in the Lord. The word. Yet it is that which is neglected the most. If you were to check all those who go to church or who title themselves Christian, they may have a Bible, yes, just to show off when they walk around. But that, that Bible is never opened. It is kept closed. Others, the Bible is those which are, you know, those which are 
If you go to the hotel room, you find one in there. Eh? Others have got such a baby. Those which start, which start with a G. Yeah, they got them. You know, there was once a mighty man in Judges, in the Judges 6. His name was Peter. <laughs> he was a man of valor. There are some of those <laughs> with the... Uh, who have got a Gideon?
not having anything to do with that which they do in the darkness. In Ephesians 5, from verse 8, For we know that which is exposed by light becomes visible, and that which is illuminated by light becomes light itself. For the endless of God's word in one's heart gives light and it gives understanding. For without the word there is no understanding. Without the word there is no understanding. Read Psalms 119 from verse 130. Unless one hears the word of God, they can never have revelation. For knowledge is for those who are filled with the word of God. That's why the Lord says, you are clean by the way that I have spoken unto you. You know, as he spoke to his disciples, he said, You are clean by the way that I have spoken unto you. You know, John 15, from verse 3. It is the words that cleanse us. We are cleansed by his words. For when we obey the word, we are made clean. It is through obedience, obedience to the word of God, that we be purified. One can never be pure in heart unless they obey the word. Unless you obey the word of God, you can never have a pure heart. Yet those who are pure in heart will see God. Many would want to see God. Even their prayers, Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to hear your voice. Yet they are like those who are blind and deaf. Lord, I want to hear your voice. The silence of the night teaching me always your wisdom that I may live and not die in you.
James chapter 3 from verse 1. If you are there, I will read. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Huh? You hear what he says there? He says, We all stumble in many ways. Eh? All have fallen short of the glory of God. For we all have what? Sinned. But we are not all sinners. What we hear many when they pray, they think it's humility. Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. What are you doing in his presence? Many pray like that. When they come before the Lord, Lord, I'm a sinner, so you're not part of him. There's no sin in him. <laughs> Children of God, they've got a lawyer. We've got an advocate in Christ Jesus. Though we may sin, yes, but we have an advocate. <laughs> Sinning, when you sin, does not make you a sinner unless you become a habitual sinner. I am not saying go and do it and then say it only it is only once. When you do it deliberately, you are a sinner. When you do it deliberately, then you are a sinner. Not all those who sin are sinners. Because their nature is not sin. So he says, anyone who is never at fault in what they say, in what they say, is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. For anything that is done outside of faith is sin. Whatever one does outside of the word of God, it is sin. He says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses, to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boss. Eh? Don't underestimate the small body that you see around and the small member in your, in your mouth. Eh? One of the smallest, that tongue. But when, it, when you open the mouth and it uh, lashes its words, boastful words, which are often empty. Empty, boastful words. Uh, you know, like uh, this, uh, you know, Shona adage, which says, uh, <laughs> uh, the mouth will never have a flooded water so that it cannot cross. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll read more, he says. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boss. Consider what a great forest is set on fire 
by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil. Eh, <laughs> tongue says a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Hey. Sets the whole course of one's life on fire. And is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt, salt water, flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt Spring produce fresh water. Eh. Do you have a tongue? Is it tamed? Eh? Is it tamed? Sometimes you say certain things that even startle yourself. You are startled when you say the eh. Eh? When you say those words, then you come to your senses, eh, did I say those words really? Many play around with words. Yet in those words is poison. For whatever poisons your spirit destroys your body. Many by their words They've courted trouble. By their words, they've courted trouble. Unintentionally. For they are ignorant of what God says concerning them. That's why the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you lack the knowledge of truth, you speak as an infant. Many are still speaking as infants. Even, when, even if Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. I thought like a child. But when I grew up, I put away everything that is to do with childness. You know, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, if you read from verse 11, many are still Speaking like children, like infants. Those who are still feeding on milk and not on solids. For those who feed on milk cannot speak yet. They are unable to speak. But those who now feed on solids are those who are acquainted, they are, they've acquainted themselves with righteousness 
the teachings of righteousness. They can speak. They can speak the wisdom of God. Their conversation is filled with scripture. They are able to discern wrong from good, evil from good. They are trained in things of righteousness. You know, if you read Hebrews 5 from verse 18, many, they do not know that they are, the trouble that they are in now is because of their confessions. It's because of their confessions. Yet the Lord encourages us to speak right and prophesy unto our destiny. For it is by words that we are what we are today. It is by words. Many forget that they are the product of the words. We are all Creations of the word of the word. We are all a creation of the word. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Everything was created by him. Without the word was nothing created that was created. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. Light shined in darkness. And darkness could not prevail over light. There was a man who was sent by God to bear witness to that light. He was not the true light, but he came to bear witness to that light so that those who hear may believe. He who was light came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But unto those who received him, he gave them power to be called children of God. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The word. You know, John 1 from verse 1. The word. Everything was created by the word. For God said, and there was. He said, and they was. The word. Yet many, they are more conscious of that which is earthly, as if that's where they came from. How was man created, my brother? How was man created? Can you tell us? Man, how was he created? Man. By word. By word, tell us. You know, what does the Lord say? In his words, when he created man. He just, he just said. Um, he said what? Many are, but you don't know too. <laughs> You know, in Genesis, it's Genesis 1, verse what? 26. It says, let us make man in our own what? Image. After our own likeness. So man was there immediately. Eh? Those who say, yes, raise up hands. Man was there immediately. Raise up hands. I saw others were saying, eh, yeah. Man, yes, was there. True, he was there. The challenge is, you say man is the body. That's where your challenge is. But afterwards, he then, out of the dust, he formed what? The body. 
and he breathed. What did he breathe in? Are you separate from your breath? Eh? He breathed in. Who breathed? God. So he was breathing from where? From himself, isn't it? So what life did men get from the onset? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Who breathed? God. <sighs> eh? So did he breathe that which was not in him? He breathed that which was in him, isn't it? And man became a living soul. He breathed life which was in him, in himself, into man. But man now, what is our focus? Our, is the body, which was formed from the dust of the ground. That's our focus. Many. We forget that the word made us what we are. The word. The word. This word. Not just any word, but the word of God. Only the word of God has life in itself. Only the word. So when God said, let us make men in our own image, after our likeness, do we hear where then they said, now uh, put the nose there, mm, the ears must be, uh, and where, you know, the son said, no, 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 I think we've made a mistake, there. By merely saying, let us make, in so, in so saying, man was there. Because others think, uh, they then stood back and say, man, eh, <laughs> eh, in the spirit, are we different? Eh, are we different? We are not. Yet many, they think, boy, they are tall, they are short, they are fat. That's the reason why God can love them. For many, even as a horse is tamed by bit or bridle, it is caused to follow. He who is taming it. Many would only follow God when there is an incentive. When they are looking for material possession. Many. Does that include you? That's why the Lord says, don't be like the horse or the mule, which only follows when it has been given bit or bridle, then it follows. Many follow God, not because they want to delight in him for who he is, but because of what he has, they want to follow him. They want to follow God. You know, if you read Psalms 32 from verse 9, they follow God because of an incentive, not because they delight themselves in him. Those who delight themselves in the Lord, do not let the book of the law, which is the word of God, depart from their mouth. They confess it all the time. They meditate upon the word of God day and night. Tell your neighbor, by the word of God, I am sanctified. I am sanctified. By the word of God, I am sanctified. I am sanctified. For those who have been sanctified, you have been set apart. They have been cleansed. They have been purified. They have been made perfect. God has put his seal of approval upon, upon them. Those who have been sanctified, God has sanctioned 
their lives in him. They are one with God. They've been consecrated for God's divine purpose. They've been made holy. Those who have been sanctified. They've been made holy. That's why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he said in John 17 from verse 17, said, Father, sanctify them by your truth. For your word is truth. It says, even as you send me into this world, so also I send them. It says, for them I sanctified myself that they may be truly sanctified. Jesus Christ was sanctified or consecrated by what he suffered. He entered into his glory by what he suffered. That's why we ourselves, we are told that only he who suffers not for having done wrong, but for having done good, is worthy the blessings of God. It says, for this we were called. We were called even for us to follow the steps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who set us an example on how we should conduct ourselves in this world. The righteous suffering for the unrighteous. He who was made to be seen, yet he knew no sin. He committed no sin, neither was there any deceit in his mouth, yet he suffered for you and for me. He died for us, that may live for righteousness. He died for us. You know, if you read 1 Peter 2 from verse 20, he died for us, for you and for me. They hailed insults at him, yet he never retaliated. When he suffered, he never made any threats. So we must also be of the same mindset as Christ had. Yet those who are carnally minded, you find them crying when they go through challenges. What have I done wrong now? Why am I doing this? Why are you doing this to me? Why am I suffering? That's what you do. Eh? How many have asked that question? What have I done wrong? Why do I deserve this? How many have asked that question? How many? You want to be justified by your action. You ought to seek to be justified by God. Jesus Christ went about doing good, healing all those who were sick and oppressed by the devil because he was highly anointed by God. God performed great miracles through him. Yet he suffered, not for having done anything wrong, but for having done everything good. He never complained, say, what is it that I've done wrong? I've, I've not done anything wrong. Even before Pilate, he never stood up and said, what have I done wrong now? He never begged for mercy from man. But he entrusted himself unto him who judges justly, who was able to raise him from the dead, God the Father. That's why Jesus Christ, he grew in favor with both men and God. He was never conscious of things of the flesh, but he was conscious of his father. He was conscious of every word that proceeded from his mouth. 
That's why he said to his disciples, the flesh profits nothing, but the words that I speak, they are life. And they quicken. You know, John 6 from verse 63. He was conscious of every word that proceeded from his mouth. For he knew that he who sent him was the one performing the very works. He who sent him was the one who was speaking through him. He delighted himself in his father, not in man. He sought the praises of his father and not of man. For when you are conscious of your position in Christ Jesus, you would seek to please he who chose you. It is only the word that can set you apart. For it is the word that judges. Many will think, ah, on that day you will be judged. The word will judge you. That's why we, what we are told, isn't it? If you read uh, John 12 from verse 47, it is the word that will judge you. The word. If I were you, I would become friends with the word. Whilst, whilst you still have what time? Tell your neighbor, be friends, be friends with the word. Not an enemy of the word. Acquaint yourself with the word so that on that day, the word will bear witness for you. The word. We will never be judged by any other standard other than the word. The word of God. The word. Yet many, when it comes to the word, it's so boring. To many, it's so boring. You know, it's like a waste of time. They are like those children of Israel, the rebellious ones, who the Lord said they even loathed food. You know, food, when they saw food, it was like they wanted to vomit. And they drew closer to the grave. But when they cried to the Lord, he heard them and he saved them. He rescued them. For he sent his word and healed them. He sent nothing else other than his word. You know, Psalm 107 from verse 17. So many, when it comes to real food, which is food for the spirit, they have no time for it. It's like they want to vomit. But in the spiritual, okay, let's read it. Let's read it and see. I'll read from verse 17. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed, loathed all food and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent his word and he healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Hmm. So when you want to open the Bible, do you have time for it? Eh? Hey. 
You have no time, no quality time. But when it comes to eating, someone calls, hey, you say, no, I'm just finishing to eat, please. You don't want to be disturbed when you are eating. Especially when you feel you have prepared that sumptuous meal. You, some even lock the door, they lock the gate. And tell perhaps, I mean, the unfortunate gardener, if you hear someone see, looking for me, please tell them I'm not there. Eh? The food kill me of this, of, of this age. They don't want to be disturbed. When it comes to food for the flesh, as they seek to gratify the desires of the flesh, the cravings of the flesh, when they have not been eating chicken for three months, when chicken passes through the door and they manage to get it, and that day it's a feast, eh. when they hear a knock at the door, others, they quickly you know, <laughs> ensure that the table is clean. Even if they had set the table quickly until the visitor is gone. Yet when it comes to the Lord, the word of God, when you hear a knock, ah, ah, oh, it's you. Then you begin to wander into the world, gossip and all. There is no gossip in the word of God. For the word is light. There is no room for darkness in the word of God. Men delight themselves. They delight themselves in worldly things. Yet we are told to be carnally minded is an enmity unto God. Those who are of a carnal mind are enemies of God. For such a mind is governed or ruled by the flesh. Unless your mind is governed by the spirit, you are an enemy of God. To be carnally minded, those who set their minds on earthly things are enemies of God. Unless your mind is set on the word of God, you are carnally minded. Unless you set your mind on the heavenly realities, no one has ever gone to heaven. So you cannot say, I'm talking of heavenly, you know, you know heavenly realities. When I just saying, you know, angels, you can even try to sketch them, to sketch the angels. That will not make you like unto God. Only the word. It's not the seeing of angels that make you like unto God. Because even Satan sees the angels and he trembles. It is not the, the vision that make you one with God, but his word. His what? His word. Unless you abide in his word, you can never be perfect. It is his word that you must pay attention to. His word. Not the works of his hands, but his word. His word. God, God's acts may change your outward appearance as you, as you get healing and all, but it is only his word that can transform you, that can make you new in his presence. Only his word can restore you into the image of Almighty God. Only his word. His word, the word of God. His word. 
Only his word. But many things are ah, it's the outside that uh, he looks to the inside. For one to be one with him is in your spirit. The word. That's why in Acts 20 from verse 32 we are told, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them who are sanctified, amongst them who are purified, who are cleansed, who are consecrated. It is the word that builds, the word that purifies, the word that cleanses. It is the word. It is the word, not the outward nature. Where you look to, yes, the word. You may receive healing, yes. But that, not, that does not make you one with him. That's why we are told, when we read Psalm 103 from verse 7, that he made known his ways to Moses. In other words, Moses had knowledge of who God is. Yet knowledge of the character of God. But he made known his acts to the children of Israel. His signs, his wonders to the children of Israel. For unless you be one who learn God's ways, you cannot rely upon his faithfulness. You cannot worship him with all your heart. It is only those who have come to know who God is. Those who learn God's ways can rely on his faithfulness. You know Psalms 86 from verse 10. Those who know that he is a great and awesome God... No one can compare to him. He does great things. His deeds are great. Unless you acquaint yourself with the Lord, you cannot be at peace with him. Only those who are acquaint with the Lord, those who submit to God, are at peace with him, and prosperity will come their way. Such are those who lay up his word in their hearts, who accept instruction from the mouth of God. We have made God to be their choicest silver. Those who delight themselves in the Lord. Such are those who see gold as nothing, who value no nothing of this world, to whom the world is worth in nothing, unless you see the world to be of no worthy to yourselves. You cannot save God right. You cannot save God with all your heart. Those who are to return to God are those who would have died to the world, put to death everything that is to do with the world. You know, Job 22 from verse 21. We need to ensure that we assign our nuggets, you know, those which we value the most in life, to the rivers and the gold of opera to the dust and make God, God your choicest silver. Only when you do so, Will you find peace with the Lord? For those who put their confidence in mere humans, those who are mere mortals, they will never see prosperity when it comes. God, the creator of all, he watches over his word to fulfill it. 
That's why he said to, to Jeremiah, what do you see, Jeremiah? He says, I see a branch of an almond tree. The Lord says, yes, you see right. For I watch over my word to fulfill it. He says, I watch over my word, my word to fulfill it. <laughs> you know, Jeremiah 1 from verse 11. He watches over nothing other than the word. For with the word, we are identified with Christ Jesus. You cannot be one with Christ unless you abide in his word. And, in, and his word remain in you. For only then are we set free for freedom. For he says, keep my word. And then you will know truth and the truth will set you free. Now John 8 from verse 31. Unless you have come to know truth, you remain a slave of the world. Those who are slaves of the world are known by their bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, hatred, jealousy, disunity, envy, and all. Those who are of the world. They are known by all those things of the world. Only the word makes us one with the Lord. When we do the word, we become one with the Lord. That's why we are encouraged not to be hearers only, but to be doers of the word. It is in doing that the oneness is attained. It is in doing the word. Tell me about it is in it is in the doing of the word that I be one with God. For when you do the word from an obedience that flows from the heart, you become like unto God. You become one with him. One with God. He does nothing without his word. So unless his word remains in you and you remain in his word, hmm, how do you remain in the word? And how does the word remain in you? Eh? Eh? You say? Eh? Reading constant and meditation in the word. Eh? Yeah? Denied. Yes? And what does that? I said, how does the word remain in you and how do you remain in the word? Okay, let's hear. When you read the word and you put it as a practice at every situation in your life, anytime, anywhere. I like that one. In every situation in your life, anytime, anywhere. When you put that word into practice, he has, he has got one part of it and has completed the other part. What he has said is how we remain in the word ourselves. We remain in the word ourselves. What he said is how the word remains in us. Eh? His is meditation. His is obedience. Anytime, anywhere. And you see, he says what he does. He's our brother, you know, he's from, uh, from the States. Eh? He's from the States. And, uh, you know, he's our brother. And many of us, we are running, but uh, he's not here all the weekends. 
that we are here. But it's well ahead of us. I'm not saying this for, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying the truth. And you know, for that reason, God directs your steps. I was just talking to one of my young boys at uh, home who, who went to, to collect him, you know, to take him to where he's staying there. I think it was around 11. And just to show, you know, if God is directing your step, we were seated. I think it was now late into the, you know, you know, in the world times it's called night, eh? So we're just talking. So uh, he said ah, to the little daughter of mine, he says, hey, can you go and uh, collect my phone? The phone was in, in, on silent in his bedroom there. And uh, the little girl goes, dashes to take the phone. He bring, she brings the phone. But as she's bringing the phone, the phone is ringing. It's on silent. And that is the time that the brother is phoning to say, please, can you have arrived? You know? And this was the first, he never had a missed call. It was the first time. He's just calling. And uh, this one, it's not like, I mean, he has checked time or anything. Just says, go and collect my phone. And as the girl is bringing the phone, the, he, she didn't even notice that the phone is ringing. And uh, he answers, ah, uh, brother, I'm, I'm, I have arrived. And you see, if he had phoned, missed call, missed call, I'm sure he would say, ah, I think let me make a plan. Eh? You know, if God is directing your step, you will not make any mistake at all. That's why I'm saying, uh, he, what he said there is exactly what he does. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yet many's obedience is circumstantial. It's conditional. I will obey you, Lord, if you do this. If you do this and that and that and that, then I'm going to obey you. And when he does this and that and that, say, ah, ah, not this time. Maybe next time do this and that and that and that again, then I'll obey you. He does it again, say, eh, no, 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 I think, uh, I think there's something else that you must do. Eh? Is that correct? Eh? Yeah, normally that's what happens. Eh? Normally that's what happens. What about you? Sometimes. <laughs> we are always bargaining with God. Yet with God, it is not in material things, but in your heart. Many. That's why David says, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are forgiven, whose sins are covered, to whom God does not count their sins against them. Says many are the woes of the wicked, but the unfailing love of God surrounds those who trust Him. The unfailing love of God surrounds those who put their trust in Him, who trust Him with all their hearts. Says, do not be like a horse or a bridle or a mule. That would require a bit of bridle in order for it to follow its owner. For many would want bread and butter issues in order for them to follow Jesus. No, this is what David says in Psalm 32 from verse 1. We need to seek God and delight ourselves in him for who he is, knowing that there's no where else that we can delight in God other than in his words. That's why we are encouraged to let God's word, the message of Christ Jesus, 
richly dwell in us. Richly dwell in us. When we say in us, it's in our hearts. The word of God dwells nowhere else other than in our hearts. The word of God must richly dwell in our hearts. Admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in scriptures. Singing songs to the Lord. Songs from the Spirit. Make with a, a heart that is filled with gratitude. We must sing to God. We must sing to God all the time. Making sure what, that whatever we do, whether in word or in deed, it is all done in the name of the Lord. Giving glory to God the Father in Christ Jesus. We must ensure, we must ensure that we continue to abide in his word Abide in his word. In his word. Delighting in the Lord is not where you just sit down, you know, in the open space and you gaze into the heavens. Say, maybe I can see a sign. Eh? <laughs> maybe I can see a sign. It is when you continually, continuously gaze into the law of liberty, the word of freedom. For those who continuously gaze into the word of truth, the word of freedom, the word, the law of liberty, they are blessed indeed. Those who continuously gaze into the word of God, they are blessed indeed. They are blessed indeed. Not where you continuously gaze at your car or your house. Say, surely God has blessed me. Eh? That's why Paul says, I've told you before and now I tell you again, even with tears, that there are those who are enemies of the cross. Those whose conduct is enmity to the cross. Who conduct themselves as enemies of the cross. Whose stomachs are their gods. Whose glory is in their shame. Whose, whose destiny is in their destruction. We have set their minds on earthly things. Those who have set their minds on earthly things. You know, Philippians 3 from verse 18. When you set your mind on the word of God, you are one who is not conformed to the world. For we are told not to be conformed to the world but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds that we may know that which is the perfect, acceptable, and good will of God. Those who are willing to offer their, their bodies as a living sacrifice is that which is the acceptable and reasonable worship unto the Lord. If we offer ourselves, our body to the Lord in obedience to his word. For unless our obedience translates into action, it is all nothing. We need the body in order for us to act upon the word. Tell your neighbor, I need the body in order for me to obey the word of God.
That's why your spirit, your soul, and your body must all agree in obedience to the word. They must all agree. They must all uh, agree in obedience to the word. For the very works of obedience which are wrought by the body as we obey from the heart purifies the heart. That's why we are encouraged to also work with our bodies. Saving God is not just, just, just about seated. Ah, I know God will provide. Say, the rains are about to fall. You know, why don't you plow your fields? Ah, the Lord is going to provide. <laughs> Paul says, those who don't work must not eat. It's aptly said in Proverbs. You know, Proverbs 6 from verse 6. Go to the ant hill, you sluggard, and learn from the ants. We have no captain or commander, yet they gather food during summer. They gather food. Because many think uh, laziness is part of Christianity. No. You must work. If you've got a child who does not work at home, don't give them food. <laughs> they must work. <laughs> Those ones are. <laughs> it's a message. <laughs> It's a, it's a camp full of mad ones there. <laughs> you know, it will be very interesting to find what, if you ask them what time, you know, they remember. Eh? You know, it will tell you that they are in a different realm altogether. Eh? A different realm. You know, they, to them, when they come to their senses, it is like uh, they've just arrived. <laughs> oh, they will remember. <laughs> they will remember the, the, the time when they got here. Everything else. That's why, like, I mean, those who are, like, uh, insane, who are mad. If they come to their senses, the time they will remember is when, just before they got mad. If they got mad when they were 11 years old, they will remember, uh, if you ask them, how old are you 11 years old? This is what is happening there. You know, this word can transform your life. For it is the only, it is the word that renews your mind. It is the word that separates you from the world. The word. It is the word. We are not saved by anything else other than the word of God. <laughs> we are not saved by anything else other than the word of God. We are not redeemed by anything else other than the word of Christ, his word says, his word is, it is my choice as gold. His word says, his word is, it is my choice as gold. We are not saved by anything else other than the word of God. We are not redeemed by anything else. His word says, His word it is, it is my choice. His word says, His word it is, it is my choice. We are not saved, we are not saved by anything other than the 
To my soul, it makes me strong. It shows me the way. It shows me the way. Oh, for only the word is essential for security and rest in Jesus Christ. Oh, in full submission, we sought to live. We are not saved by any. of God is sweeter than any of the greatest spoils that one can ever find. For it is that which changes, that which builds. In keeping the word, there is great reward. By his word, we are warned. By the word of God, we are warned. The word of God is all that you need. That's why the Lord said, in response to Satan, the foolish one, men shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. For Satan was seeking to tempt him with material possession. Food that gratifies the cravings of the flesh. He was not excited with what Satan was offering. His response was straight to the point. Quoting the scripture, the word. For the word is a weapon. It is the sword of the spirit. And those who wield the word are overcomers. For we are told that though we walk in the flesh, we war not in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold, casting down every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, bringing every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus. So when you realize that the weapons of your, of your warfare, they are not carnal, they are not material. They are not in material possessions or anything physical, but the word of God. And such word is not what you are holding in the hands, where you are holding the Bible and say, I've got the word of God. No, the word of God is not that which is written on the pages of the Bible, but that which has been internalized and planted in your heart. For unless the word be rooted and grounded in your heart, it can never be fruitful. You can never bear fruit that is lasting. The fruit of love can only be produced by those in whose hearts the word of God has taken root where the word is rooted and grounded. For it is only in doing the word that we manifest our love for God and our love for our fellow man. 
It is through the word that we, we, we can produce the right fruit that is pleasing unto the Lord. It is in hearing the word that we have faith. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the message about Jesus Christ. You know, Romans 10 from verse 17. Yet without faith, it is impossible to please God. Meaning, without the word of God, it is impossible to please God. For faith itself springs from the word. Love itself springs from the word. For in the word we find agreement. Agreement of faith and love. For in, 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 in the word... Faith and love coalesce the meat to produce the right fruits, the fruit that pleases God. For those who abide in the word, in obedience to the word, they show their love for God. And in so doing, their ex benefit their fellow brother their fellow brother, their fellow sister. In so doing, they are manifesting their love for, men, for, for, for mankind, for their brothers, for their sisters. In obedience, they show their love for God. In acting on the word, it's obedience. And at the same time, it is love to your fellow brothers, your sisters. It is in the word. Not where you are just carrying the Bible around. Ah, I've got the word. Where? When you then just open the Bible and uh, I've got the word, you know, like others would do. I've got the word. Today we are going to share the word with a notebook. Today. Eh? They start to read, read and they start to give you stories. And before you know it, they are in your pocket. God said you must not come into his presence empty-handed. Empty-handed. You should tell them I've got my Bible. I'm not empty-handed. <laughs> Better to have an empty hand than to have an empty heart. He is looking to the heart that seeks him. Unless you seek God with all your heart, you will not find him. Seek him with all your heart. Trust him with all your heart. And good will come your way. Good will come your way. As you serve God in all circumstances, be content in all circumstances for only those who are content can serve God. In every situation. For we are told to rejoice always. To pray without ceasing. To give God thanks. In all circumstances. For this is the will of God concerning us. And not to quench the spirit of God. And not to despise prophecy. But to hold on to that which is which is good, and reject everything that is evil. Test prophets. Test it. Test it and see whether it's true. Only the word is. Says for the God of truth will sanctify your spirit, your soul, and body. He will sanctify it. You know, if you read 1 Thessalonians 5 from verse 16, God has instructed us to prophesy unto our destiny. Yet what do we find? A little challenge there. You are like one who is driving from here to town. You have a puncture by the roundabout. You give up and say, I'm going to abandon the car. And now this car, I bought it yesterday. And now it is punctured. I'll leave it here. You walk away. You know, 
Yes, smiling, uh, they call them what? I mean, you know, you know the wind just goes in and uh, he now experiments with the car. When you think of going back, the car is already bashed. Huh? Many are giving up too soon. Because of a slight detour in their lives. They are, uh, because I'm sick, so I must say, you say, oh, you, why do you say, I'm, uh, can you not see I'm sick? Such are those who are fools. Who are still infants. They don't know how to talk. They cannot speak yet. Does anyone have an you know, amplified Bible? It's, it's very nice in there. Amplified Bible. Want to read, uh, can I have amplified? I just want to, uh, you know, you know, uh, maybe read it yourself. Uh, Mike there, you know, uh, Hebrews 5, verse 13. You can stand and read. You can stand up and read. I hope it's amplified in English. You can read from where you are. Read, uh, just read it. So you must not uh, engage, you know, infants. They will corrupt your body. 13. Hebrews 5, verse 13. Yeah, from that verse 13 onwards, yeah. She is trying to get acquainted with the addresses, the heavenly addresses. She has got a very nice Bible, a very nice one. And which she even tells you where, where Genesis is, where Hebrews is, but... Uh... Okay. Are you there? Yeah, but uh, this is verse... Um, 13. 13. Put your mic your on hand, the side there. Your hand is... Yeah. Put your hand on the side. Oh. Anyone, anyone who lives on milk, uh, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. In fact, it goes on to say, because they cannot yet speak, that, you know, it should, it does, okay, bring that one. Huh? Yeah, it's not, it's not uh, amplified, yeah. yeah. It's not amplified, yeah. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced uh, and unskilled in the doctrine of uh, righteousness of conformity to the divine will in people's thought and action. For he is a mere infant, not able to talk yet. Uh, you know, talking, when you take an infant, you say, eh, you cry for food, uh, just crying. Why are you crying? Crying. Eh, cry. What are you crying for? Uh, can you understand the language of cry? Do you know whether he's crying because swelled, he sold nappies or hungry or something is uh, itching? Do you know? That's why the language of infants is very difficult. Not able to talk yet. When you're not able to talk yet, you cannot even make the right request before God. It's always, I want food. I want a house. If God, you give me house. If you give me food. If you give me husband. If you give me wife. Ah, I'm content. You are a fool. <laughs> Such are those who you find when things go bad, they are quick to confess, ah, I'm sick. Ah, why me? Why me, Lord? And they look at, you know, don't stay away from those people if they are sick and you are in good health. They will, you know, they will be saying, if, why me, this one is, is okay. They want sickness to come in. <laughs> Stay away from those people. They will corrupt your body. <laughs> one, 
When they find that they've got cancer in the body and someone, neighbor, is no cancer and they go to church and neighbor does not go to church, they are saying, but me, I go to church. Why me? But why not cancer? Go to this one. Eh? You know, <laughs> such thoughts are born out of pride. Because only pride causes them to think that they should own them alone should receive the best from God. So to them, they only find reason to serve God when things are going well in their lives. That is the only time that they can say, Thank you, Jesus. Not when things are going bad. When they lose their money, their car, their house, they say, Where is God? And you see, those of the world will come also and say, where is your God? They say, hey, you know, my friend, uh, I think you are right. Are you not a fool? You are a fool. Why? Because your mind has been set on earthly things. You think saving God is all about material possession. Yet that's not what God is seeking. He wants us to be salvation secure. Not to be secure in this world. To be secure in material possessions. But to be secure in him. To be secure in him. Those who are not able to talk yet. They are known by their confessions. I am weak. I am poor. I am sick. Uh, and when they say it. Lying on their bed. Uh, when they have a visitor and tears will be like flowing. Yeah. Uh, you know, today I didn't manage to eat you. Hey, did you try a banana? Yeah, I tried. I only ate a spoon. <laughs> eh? <laughs> eh? They think in those negative confessions they can get healing. No. You are digging your grave unless you change your confession and speak in agreement with God. For he says the inhabitants of Zion shall not say I am sick for their sins are forgiven. For the nature of sickness is only for those who are not forgiven yet. But when you are forgiven, the nature in you is the divine nature of God. You partaking, you are partaking in the divine nature of God. Where there is healing, where there is deliverance. The fact that you cannot see it does not mean you don't have the healing. It is those who believe by seeing who would want to say thank you Jesus when only pain has gone. When only the wound has healed, then they will say, ah, thank you, Jesus. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. That's what the Lord says to Thomas, isn't it? When he says, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. But blessed are those who believe without seeing. You know, John 20 from verse 24. So when we focus on the invisible things around us, the invisible things which are the spiritual realities, we please God. Not focusing on the temporal things of this world, those which are visible, but focus on the invisible things. One who focuses on the invisible things will say, thank you, Jesus, even before they get the healing. Your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, that you tell, I am sick, cannot change anything. They can say, oh, uh, sorry. What happened? You narrated, you narrated, so. And you don't know what is in them, eh? If the one in them is the foolish one, we we'll say, oh, <laughs> You know, you will not hear the laughter, but you will be laughing to celebrate 
Meanwhile, you see, they are saying, uh, looking very pitiful, sympathizing. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, so this is what happened. This is what they did to you. Uh, meanwhile, the real doer is inside them. That's why the Lord said they flatter with their lips. Yet in their hearts is full of deceit. Don't trust them. When trouble comes, call upon that name. Let the name of our Heavenly Father be a, fortif a fortified tower for you where the righteous may run to and they are safe. For the Lord has told us to prophesy unto our lives. Yet many are prophesying unto their destruction. For when you read Ezekiel 37 from verse 1, where Ezekiel was taken into that valley of dry bones, he said, and the bones were very dry. It was a valley filled with dry bones. And the Lord said, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, you alone, Lord, no. I don't know, but you alone know whether they can live or not. He says, prophesy, son of man, prophesy unto these bones. Prophesy. He was told to speak the word of God to those bones. He was told to prophesy, even as the Lord is saying, prophesy unto your life, now you. Okay, let's read this again. Ezekiel 37. From verse 1, I'll read. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the what? He's saying, hear the word of the, of the Lord to the dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. He never said, hear my word. He said, hear the word of the Lord. When you quote scripture upon a situation, you can tell that leg and say, you leg, you do, you leg that does not move. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. You eyes that are now failing, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Meaning is now reported, isn't it? You are saying the one in me is speaking. Hear the word of the Lord. In other words, you are saying, what I'm speaking now is not of my own making. Okay, I'll read. Let's read one. He said, then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to, to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you'll come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you'll come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Close inverted commas. Huh? You saw where the opening is? Opening says, prophesy to these bones and say, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord, sovereign Lord says to the dry bones. I'll make, he goes on, breath, blah, blah, right. Then close what? In vertical commands. Then, so, he, he now is he's saying himself now. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was Sighing, 
there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and, and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded. As he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet. A vast army. No wonder why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Are you weak? All you need is the word of God. Are you sick? All you need is the word of God. Are you oppressed? All you need is the word of God. This is what the Roman centurion knew more than others. You know, in Matthew 8 from verse 5, when he said to the Lord, on behalf of his servant, where he went to the Lord, he said, my servant is sick, please heal him. The Lord said, shall I come and heal him? He said, no, 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 no. I don't deserve you to come under my roof. For I'm a man under authority too. I said to one, go, he goes. To another one, come and he comes. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And the Lord marveled and said, truly, in the whole of Israel, I've never seen such great faith. Such great what? Faith. Just say the word. For he knew that in the word of God is life. If you know that in the word is life, if you know that in the word of God is life, you will speak the word from a believing heart. Even as he says in 2 Corinthians 4 from verse 18, as it is written, I believe, therefore I speak. So we also, we have got the spirit of faith in us. Believe and therefore speak. When you believe and speak, you'll get the results. That's why we are told that if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the, into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, whatever you say, believe that it has been done, it will happen for you. It will be done for you. It will happen as you have said. If you don't doubt in your heart, For God is not a liar. He is not born of man that he should lie. When he says he will do, he will do. When he promises, he will fulfill. You know, Numbers 23 from verse 19. So when you prophesy, prophecy, men would want to, they think prophecies are, my sister, hey, stand up, my, my sister. Stand up. I see that you come from uh, Magaba, and you stay in Magaba, and you stay in, in a tin. <laughs> and you see, they'll say, ah, hey, prophesy, man of God, prophesy. <laughs> eh? When she's being told she stays in a tin. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest prophetic word is the gospel of Christ Jesus. That points to your healing. That points to your salvation. Not prophecy that causes pride to swell in your heart. For when you are told, hey, my sister, you have stayed too long without a, a husband. You know, I see you next year, next year. You know, you, a millionaire is coming your way. And that, this millionaire... Hey, she is very, very loving. You know, what would happen in your heart? What would be happening there? Oh, feel, feel pride. And you know what will happen? Every man who is a millionaire, when she passes, I think this one. <laughs> I think that one. I think that one. <laughs> eh? Is that true? Eh? 
it's true, it's true. <laughs> that will happen, you know. <laughs> the greatest prophecy is one which points you to your destiny in Christ Jesus. Why should one give me prophecy on that which belongs to me already? Unless you are ignorant of truth. Everything belongs to you, even as you are of Christ. So if you be of Christ, everything belongs to you. So why does one come and tell me that you're going to have money? I know my father provides me. So why tell me? Isn't he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. you know, so why would you need someone to tell you when you seek worldly things, you are likely to get blessings from the wrong source. You know the wrong source? He promised, he, he wanted to do it for our Lord, isn't it? What more of those who ask? You know, you say, Lord, give me a car. Lord, give me. He will give you. Do you know whether God does not seek to give those things? He said they will follow, but seek him. Be where he is and you avoid everything. Can a child who stays with the parents who are caring and loving go hungry? Eh? But if the child is outside the house, can he be fed? No. But if you are in the house and you've got a, a permanent place in the house, how can you go hungry? How can he not provide you with all that you should desire? Isn't those who delight themselves in him, he will grant them all their heart's desires. But only don't desire the world. Desire the heavenly things, the heavenly realities. All other things will follow. You hear many, oh, I'm sick, I'm, I'm poor, oh, I'm weak. Who are you telling? Who are you celebrating? Are you ce celebrating the goodness of the Lord? His wonderful acts or you are celebrating the evil acts of the, of the wicked one? Who are you celebrating? When you proclaim the works of the devil, who are you celebrating? You. Who? Are you celebrating God or the foolish one? When you go about pro you know, proclaiming to all and sundry, I'm sick, I'm poor. You know, my child, eh, eh, he's just a failure. <laughs> eh? Isn't the Lord says, I did not give you the spirit of fear or again to, to be timid, but I gave you the spirit of power, knowledge, and of a sound mind. Yet you are saying your child has got a, the spirit of a, you know, a dander head. <laughs> eh? Why not celebrate God in whatever situation? The more you celebrate, the more Satan will be questioning, where is your God? Who are you celebrating? Eh, can you not see you have made a mistake? Yeah, you waste the God, you know, that you are saving. If God that you are saying you are saving, would you let you, you know, be in this situation? That's what he wants you to curse God. He is saying, curse your God and be separated from him. Because when you curse God, you are separated from him and Satan will do what he wills with you. He can then destroy you. As long as you are in the presence of God, Satan has no power over you. He cannot prevail over you. So what he wants is, first of all, he takes you away from the presence of God. Then he deals with you. Yet many are known to celebrate the works of the foolish one. I am sick. Who is the author of sickness? If you are right with God, why would you be having a sin nature in you? Sickness may come as a visitor, but you don't have to give it permanent abode in your life. Amen. We must celebrate the wonderful deeds of God, proclaim the goodness of God upon our lives, not be 
deeds of the foolish one. Yet many, they are known to celebrate Saturn. Are you part of them? I can tell you, the more you celebrate God in those calamities, the more the thoughts will come. Saturn will put thoughts in you. Hey, do you think you are, you are wise in what you are doing? How can you be praising God when you have no food on your table? Look at that one who does not even know the door to the church. Never in the church. They've got food. Why don't you do like them? Still also. And the lie. Go to the border and you get things. And you can escape duty. And say, ah. Then you go to your neighbor who does not. Eh, eh, how do you do it? Say, ah, easy. I will be going next week. You can join me. Uh, next week, but we had self service, but, uh, but it doesn't matter. I'll come and I'll come next week. You know, I'll, I'll go to the service next week. You follow. Then they show you the path of destruction. Why? Because you are not patient enough. You could not wait upon the Lord. Many, they want God to act in their own time. Not at his time, but at your own time. If you be one who was sanctified by his word, you would know that no matter how many promises the Lord has made, they are all yes and amen. amen. For all his promises have been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Amen. For it is God who has put his seal of approval upon our lives and has given us his spirit to dwell in our hearts. Read 2 Corinthians 1 from verse 17. So when you know that God has set you apart for his own good pleasure, for we are God's workmanship, recreated for good works which God prepared for us in advance. We are his workmanship. That's what he says. And upon, his, upon us he has put his seal of approval. Read Ephesians 2 from verse 8. Seal of approval to be his children. To be known to be who we are. Children of God, without blemish, in this warped and crooked world, we do everything without complaining or murmuring. For we know that both to do, to will and to act, it is God who works in us, according to his own good pleasure. And therefore, we do everything without complaining. That we are, that we be children of God without blemish in this warped and crooked world, holding on to the word of life. In Philippians 2 from verse 12. If we know that we ought to hold on to the word of life, to run the rest well, looking unto Jesus Christ, who himself is uh, the author and perfecter of our faith, we ought to delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen. We ought to delight ourselves in the Lord. You will not cry of sickness. Sickness is such a visitor if you are a child of God. Unless you are not forgiven of your sins, then that sin will destroy you. That sickness, it is not the sickness that destroys, but sin in you. Tell your neighbor, it is not sickness that destroys. It is not sickness that destroys. But the sin in you. But the sin in you. Because we are told that the sting of death is sin. He never said the sting of, the sting of death is sickness. No. 
The sting of death is sickness. Did you read it anyway? But the sting of death is what? Sin. That's what he says. And the power of sin is what? The law. Yet we are told that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. He set aside the law. He cancelled our indebtedness on the cross of Calvary. We were indebted to the law, but Jesus Christ, he cancelled it. He deprived sin of power. You know, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 54. That's why Isaiah says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. Come and drink. Without money, come buy. Come buy wine, come buy. Wine and milk. Buy bread and eat. Say, why spend your money on that which is not bread? Why labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen and hear. That should be saved. You know, Isaiah 55 from verse 1. For we must not compare God to ourselves. We must not compare ourselves to God. It says we need to seek God when, while he can be found. Seek him while he can be found. Those who seek him with all their heart will find him. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Yes, the heavens are above the earth. So are his thoughts to our thoughts. His ways to our ways. His word will not return to him void without accomplishing that which he has assigned it. As the rain and the snow fall to the ground and cause it to bud and be fruitful, producing bread to the eater and seed to the sower, so also his word will never return to him void. It will accomplish that which he has assigned it to. Then you'll go out in joyful song. You'll go out, you'll bring you forth in peace. Then the hills and the mountains will break into song, into joyful song. The trees of the forest will clap their hands. They'll clap. You know, trees, um, you think trees don't clap, eh? You think they don't think, they think more than you. <laughs> what more of this soil that you are, we are, you know, you know, trading on, trembling on, yet this soil thinks more than us. Eh? This soil. <coughs> Says then the thorns, the thorn trees will be Produce why will be will be turned into a fair tree. You know, fair, you know, that soft, uh, you know, the briar will be a metal tree in that day of the Lord. It is for those who are righteous before who are right before God who know that there's value in the word. Only in the word of God, those who speak right. Not those who speak way that is not consistent with the word of God. When you want to tell a brother or a sister that hey, I've got a, I've got a stranger in my body, but thank God I'm healed. It doesn't mean pain is gone. Ah, mean it when you say thank God I'm healed. Mean it in your heart. You must know. I, 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 <laughs> The challenge with men is this. Your greatest challenge is <laughs> this thing called believing. Just, you know, just take the word for what he says. Not focusing on the wound there. The wound is there. But mean it when you say, yes, I'm the healed of Christ. Those who are conscious of God 
know that they've received their healing even before the physical healing takes place. If you know that you're a child of God, then strangers will come, yes. They'll come. Visitors will come, yes. If in a house that does not want visitors, you can still see a visitor coming. <laughs> you hear, hear the get, go, 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 go. Hey. Who is that? You don't even know a stranger. Say, can I help you? Say, please, I'm looking for a road like this. Some, they even say your address where you are staying. Say, who are you? You don't tell them that it's your house. That's where they are looking for. You know, when they say, I'm looking for house number one, uh, you know, Chagulanyanga house, you know, it road. Say, this is the house. Inside you, I say, this is my house. Uh, you said you are looking for what? Say number one. Yeah. Uh, say, uh, who are you? Who are you looking for exactly? Before even you tell them who you are, who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and when they tell you, say, ah, no, yeah, this is the place that you are looking for, but no one, no one by that name stays here. But that's a visitor, isn't it? But you kept them out. Resist the devil and you will flee away from you. You resist the devil by standing in faith. How do you stand in faith? It's not, I'm standing in faith. Eh? I'm standing in faith. How do you stand in faith? By believing that what God says he has done, he has done. By believing that what God has promised to do, you will do. Amen. Abraham stood in faith. He was fully persuaded that he who had promised he has got the power to do exactly as he has promised. Amen. In so doing, he gave glory to God. He was fully persuaded. He never doubted. He never doubted God. He was fully, fully persuaded. Against hope, he believed in hope. <coughs> when you know that God is in his word, and when you take his word to heart, you know that God has said this to be a specific message to you. The challenge with men is they read the word. Like they would read history for passing an exam. Or they read mess for passing in an exam. No, that's not how you should read the word. You must personalize the word to be a message coming directly from the throne of God to yourself. Amen. Amen. When he says, by his stripes I'm healed, see it to be applied to yourself. This is what Job was reminded. You know, when you read Job 5 from verse 17, when he was reminded by you know, you know, Eli, Eli, Eli Pass, when he says, hey, my friend, you used to comfort others, but now look at you. You can hardly comfort yourself. You're all over, crying. For he said, blessed are those who God corrects. Don't despise the discipline of God. When God disciplines you, don't despise him. Say, don't despise. You may go through challenges and all, but you laugh over them. Over famine, over calamities, you laugh over them. For God is one who wounds, yet he binds. He injures, but by his hands he heals. That's what he says. He wounds, but he binds. He may have allowed that cancer to come so that as you confess his goodness, he will bind. Amen. He may have injured in order for you in that accident, in order for you to see the goodness of God so that as you confess him, he will heal with his own hands. Amen. For he says, he will make you to, be, to make a covenant with the stones of the field and to be at peace with the reptiles and the animals of the field 
and nothing will by any means hurt you. Nothing. He says you laugh over all, all these things. He says you have, we have examined these things and we know them to be true. Apply them to yourself, you. Apply them to yourself. Amen. Apply them to yourself. That will tell you that God is not a liar. He will never lie. And he has never lied. God is true. In him there is no darkness. Amen. In him there is light always. The word of God is truth. By it we are sanctified. When you know that the word of God is God speaking to you. When you know that he is speaking to you. God speaking to you. You, you, you. Only when the word becomes personal to you, will it gain entrance into your heart. Amen. You must be mindful on that which you watch, what you set your eyes on. Amen. Even those television programs, you must be mindful, lest you corrupt your heart. When your heart is corrupted, your body too is corrupted. Sickness comes as well. For the eyes are the window to your soul. Your eyes, your very eyes are the windows to your soul. Whatever you see, it has got the capacity to enter your heart. <coughs> Yet we are told to guard diligently our hearts. For out of it comes the issues of life. You know Proverbs 4 from verse 23. Read also. Luke 11 from verse 34. So when you know that it is the way that is most important, you will never run for signs, for wonders. You will never run for prophecy. The greatest prophecy to mankind is the gospel of Christ Jesus. Amen. No wonder why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. No matter what may happen to me, I am not ashamed. I will keep confessing the word. Amen. Since I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus, for then is the power of God revealed unto salvation from faith to faith. For then is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to what? To faith. It is the power of God and salvation. First to the Jew, then to the Greek. For the Jew wanted a sign. The Greek wanted wisdom. That's why Jesus Christ, he became a stumbling block unto the Jews. And foolishness unto the Gentiles. Say, for it is written, the just shall live by faith. You know Romans 1 from verse 16. The just shall live by faith. <coughs> so when you know that the word of God is the only thing that matters for your salvation. If you want to enjoy life in this world, follow signs and wonders. And everything that has to do with the flesh that appeals to the eyes. If you want to be with Jesus Christ on that last day, even now to be in him, then desire the sincere milk, which is the word of truth that you may grow thereby. Amen. The word will see you into the kingdom of God. Let the word of God be rooted and blind planted, be rooted and grounded in your heart. Let it be planted in your heart. Amen. Your heart. Not in your mind. Not in your mind. Meditate upon the word. Focus your thoughts on the word of God. When you read, send your mind to focus on heavenly realities. Not on earthly things. Your mind is always going astray. When you want to focus on things of God, you think food. 
When you want to focus on the things above, you find clothes. It is always you know, going against the spirit. You want to focus on the word, your mind, uh, you see, because you see, your mind is controlled more by what you see. Something passes here. Uh, you start to think, huh? Or you smell something uh, nice there. You start to think of uh, food. Food. You must bring every thought of yours into the obedience of Christ Jesus. Meaning, let your mind be dominated by the word of God. When you want to say, I'm sick, say, I'm healed. You know, when you say, I'm healed, others who are mature will know that there's a visitor. If you want, you can say, I've got a visitor, you know, called uh, flu, but uh, I know his time has come. His end has come. He's living. Because I'm the healed of Christ. You are the healed, not the one to be healed. You are the healed, pastors. My sickness was nailed on the cross Amen. of Calvary. Amen. If you find yourself say, I am sick, you have gone back to Calvary to, to collect your sickness Amen. on the cross. <laughs> eh? And those who are known to walk in the way of sin, you have gone on to the cross and say, sin, I love you, come back. <laughs> but if you know you are a child of God, you can say, you know, visitors will come. Believe you me. That's why the Lord says, you know, in this Isaiah 33 from verse 24, where he says, the inhabitants of Zion shall not say, I am sick, because their sins are forgiven. Meaning, those for whose sins are not forgiven must say, I am sick. Are we inhabitants of Zion? Are our sins forgiven? Yes. So, why align your language with the foolish one to celebrate and proclaim, proclaim his evil deeds? You can say, I've got a visitor, but I'm healed. And now, when you say I'm healed, believe that you are healed. Amen. Believe that you are, you are healed. If I know that this sickness is not, not, is not unto death, I will not worry. Why be a slave of sickness? When a slave of sickness, you are living in constant fear. Yeah, this sickness. This sickness. Yeah, will I live? Oh. Is the life that you live your, your life or Christ's life? If it is Christ's life, then you live. Let's just sing that song in Habitants of Zion. Persecuted, yet not abandoned. Perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, yet not abandoned. Perplexed, yet not in despair. I praise, I praise, I praise.
yourself confessing as the world will conf would confess why would you proclaim the evil nature of Satan why not proclaim the goodness of God for when we say I am healed I am blessed I am strong. We are proclaiming the goodness of God in our lives. When we proclaim such goodness of God, no matter the circumstance that we may find ourselves in, we give glory to our Heavenly Father. For it gives Him honor when we persevere under great trials and challenges. For when we confess the Lord, knowing that nothing can ever destroy us, that's why Paul says, be joyful in hope. Be patient in suffering. And faithful in prayer. He was saying challenges are inevitable to a child of God. How else can you be tested to be a genuine Christian other than by tests and trials? When they come your way, then you are known for who you are. Those who have deep roots into the word of God are never shaken by the storms of this world. For they have the glory of God as a canopy above them. Read Romans 12 from verse 12. They are never shaken by anything. They will give Glory to God in all situations. They will always glorify God no matter what they may be going through. 
So when you know that you belong to Jesus Christ, no matter the circumstances, you will always give glory to God. No matter what you may be going through. Is it challenges? Is it hardships? Nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. Nothing in this world. Nothing. As long as you know that you are an inhabitant of Zion, confess right. Keep confessing right. You must keep confessing right. In time, your situation will give way. It is not how strong, you know, water is that it overcomes even the rock, but it is its persistence. It is what its persistence. Have you ever seen, you know, like a, where you have a concrete, you know, which is where there's a leaking tap, a leaking tap, it's just producing drops. Do, do. Do in time what you see, the concrete gives way. So those who are persistent in prayer, in time, they will reap the fruit of joy. Don't look to your challenges that you are in now. Don't make them cause you to speak wrong and proclaim the evil nature of Satan. Don't let your situation dictate to you. But always be conscious of God in your life. Be conscious of God in your life. Tell your neighbor, by the word of God, by the word of God I, am I am sanctified. May God bless you. May bless his word.